Well, hello there, friends. Today I'm making one of my mom's favorite pasta dish. Papadella pasta with braised short ribs. Absolutely delicious. The meat falls off the bone, braised to perfection. I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's delicious, really easy. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, we're making it right now. Okay, friends, well, this reminds me, my mom used to make that on Sunday if we were good. Now, if you didn't make chicken, she made one of those, those papatella pasta, thick fettuccine with a ragu. Uh, you can make it with a chuck roast. And, but I saw the, uh, the short ribs the other day at the store, and they were not that expensive, and they're beautiful. So morning short ribs, you certainly don't need the bone for that. <laughs> but um, we dust them in flour, and we're going we're gonna to saute them. Now, you can do this in one pot. You see, look, look. See right there, the, the bacon, I got a half a pound of bacon in there that I've been sauteing. The, and you do it slowly when you do this. Remember, okay, friends, you gotta do it slowly so then the, the fat has time to render and you don't burn the lean part of the bacon, right? So uh, it would be enough uh, fat right there to, uh, to do the whole thing. But for the purpose of this video, it makes it easier for me if I do them separately. But you can certainly do it in, in the same pot. All right, so I got a, a big onion right there. Actually, it's not that big, this one. I saute the onion, and remember always the onion number one. Always, 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 always. If I turn the burner on, it works better. And we're gonna caramelize the onion first, and then we're gonna put the rest. It's very simple, and this is like a no-brainer, friend. And we're gonna do it in the oven, so it's easier to do it in the oven. But you can certainly do it in, in the pot. You're just gonna have to watch it, watch it. So look, uh, flour, on all sides, I season the, the short rib first. I season them with salt and pepper, and then I season the flour, okay? But season them first, okay? And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna, get, we're gonna put them in the pan and we're gonna saute them. Otherwise, like I said, if it was for, at, at home, uh, at home we do it in the same pot, okay? And then you remove them, and I'll show you. It's very simple. This is a really simple recipe. Anybody can do this. Okay, friends, remember, I try to do things that anybody can do. It's not like somebody can say, well, sure, he does it, and, uh, but these get experience, I'm not experienced. Friends, it's not that big of a deal. Huh? Look, all right, we're gonna saute those, we're gonna really get some beautiful Maillard reaction, salt and pepper. Nice, 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 so we're gonna saute this guy right there, and then let's make sure I get some nice heat on everything. Yes, 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 yes. We're gonna saute them around. And uh, now, what else are we putting in here this dish? Like I said, this is a no-brainer, friend. I got some uh, carrots, then I cut not too big, but uh, remember, this is gonna take a long time to cook, friends. A good two and a half hour. I want it to fall off the bone, and I want to be able to shred the meat. My mom would just take it out, take the bone out, and shred the meat and put, serve it with a pasta. You can serve it with mashed potatoes, you can serve it with polenta. Oh, polenta would be delicious, right? That polenta I made the other day, you guys gotta check it out, I'm telling you. A lot of people don't like polenta because they go to a restaurant and usually they make it with water. Water, mamma mia. So we make us with stock and, and cheese and butter and it's delicious. And uh, people are on the diet and going, oh, he goes again with the butter. Hey, why not? Butter is good for you. See, we got it here all the time. So very important. All right, we're gonna wait for this to get with him. Oh, look, see, that's what I want right there. This is what I want right there, about all the way around the door. Oh, yeah, I want it all the way around it. Give me that caramelization right there. All right, so we're gonna put a little garlic. All right, just a little garlic in here in a minute. In a minute, I wanna get the onion caramelized a little bit first. Then we're gonna put some uh, fresh thyme. I got about, uh, I don't know, would you say, a tablespoon and a half of fresh thyme, if I were to measure. I got about, a, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons of garlic, chopped garlic. You can put the whole clove of garlic in there. So it's gonna braise, we're gonna braise it, right? And we got the carrots, we got the celery, it's about three or four stalk of celery, you know, the, the rib. And uh, this is about, what, a cup and a half of that, of, tomato, of uh, carrots. <laughs> and I got a 28 can of uh, peeled uh, Lavalle tomatoes. Then I am going to, then I crush really, really good, okay? 
Let's see, let's see what do we got here. Let's see what do we got. We get, we're starting, we're starting, okay? It's very important. We gotta do this all the way. So now let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, we're gonna put, uh, let's put a little bit of garlic. So now what happened when you put the garlic, friends? What happened when you put the garlic? When you put the garlic, it means you are ready for your liquid. The minute you smell the garlic, you know a lot of you have sent comments. You guys are fantastic, by the way. What a, a, an amazing opportunity for a chef to, to share what he knows on YouTube, let me tell you. And you guys have, I say, wow, I don't burn the garlic anymore and I smell so much better. The minute you smell the garlic, you smell it, right? Like you smell it. It's fragrant. The, 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 trust me, the whole place smells now. The whole studio smells beautiful. You smell it and then you put something wet on it. Okay, and what are we going to put wet on it? Wine. Now, I remember the whole time, you know, this you got to measure carefully, okay? Put a whole bottle in there. Buy a good wine. I remember my mom being the Italian and my father being the French. Uh, my, uh, my mom would say, use a Chianti, use a, use a good Italian wine, a Barolo or something. And, uh, and my father said, Italian don't know how to make wine. We're gonna use French wine. You make the dish and, uh, and, and I do the wine. So sure enough, we would end up doing French wine and guess what I'm doing? I'm using a French Cabernet Sauvignon, okay? But <laughs> use whatever wine makes you happy, okay, friends? It was always, the Italian don't know how to do that. The French don't know how to do that. The mom, I mean, my whole life I had to deal with this. <laughs> but it was a very happy family. So look, we're gonna put the carrots in there and they're not cut very small. Otherwise, you see what happened if they cut very small. Let's turn this off because we got it. And then we're gonna put our tomatoes. Oh, no, 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 no. I gotta wait for the wine to reduce. I almost forgot, I broke the cardinal rule. Whenever you're putting wine, you have to wait for the wine to reduce by half, just by half. All right, so I'm gonna get those continue. Man, they're really browning. They really are doing a good job, that's what I want. I really want this beautiful color right here, friends, okay? So I'm gonna continue getting those nice and browned. I'm gonna get the wine to reduce by half. So I put a whole bottle, so by the time I got a half a bottle left, then I'm gonna put a little bit of stock. I'm gonna put the, the ribs in there and I'm gonna pop it in the oven. I got the oven at 375. I'm waiting for, oh, it's important. Uh, 375 and I'm gonna cook it until they fall off the bone. The reason why it's important, friends, sometimes I forget to tell you things. You cannot put any liquid on top of the wine if you're doing a wine reduction. Okay, you can't put tomato, like a, this would be like three cup of, uh, of liquid on top of the wine. It's very difficult to do a wine reduction if you have a bunch of liquid with it. So you let it reduce first and then you add the liquid later. All right, so I'm gonna wait for this to reduce by half. I'm gonna add my tomatoes, I'm gonna add the ribs and I'm gonna go in the oven. And I'll see you when I'm done with it and it falls off the bone and we're gonna serve with the papadale pasta. You see how beautiful it looks. See you in a little while. Okay, friends, as you can see, the wine is reduced at least by half. But remember what you want to do, friends, also, is you want to test it. You want to go in there and you want to test it to make sure it's nice and smooth. If it's not nice and smooth, keep cooking it. It will eventually get smooth unless you really, really worked with a very bad wine. Look how beautiful that looks, friends. Look at this. Okay. They look good, but uh, they got to really, really cook now, okay? So we're going to put the tomatoes in there. The whole can of tomatoes. Now that the wine is reduced, we're gonna put a whole can of tomato in there. You see, it's beautiful. And then we're gonna put our ribs. Really simple, no biggie. Right there, boom, boom, boom. And uh, they will release quite a bit of fat. There's a lot of fat in there, but there's nothing wrong with it. So. What we're gonna do, friends, we're gonna submerge them, reduce the heat. We're gonna submerge them in liquid. I'm gonna put the top on, and then I'm gonna pop them in the oven for the next two, two and a half hours until they are nice and tender and tender. Make sure you um, 
you put a you put a cover on it. Three seventy five, right? Okay. And oh, a little bit of B stock. <laughs> I always forget something. <laughs> I tell you, a little bit of B stock right here. We don't need a lot. Just enough, because you see, I got enough liquid. But the beef stock, I mean, my beef stock is beautiful. It's homemade beef stock. You can certainly uh, make this and, uh, and, and put just a little bit. You see, it doesn't need a lot because we still got a lot of liquid between the tomato and the stock. All right, friends, going in the oven, and I'll see you in about two and a half hours. <laughs> okay, friends, well, two and a half hours, and they're ready, and I took uh, the papadella out of the water. So they had just big fettuccine, use a regular fettuccine, use a mashed potatoes, use a polenta. All right, so here we go, we come out of the oven. So now friends, a lot of the fat, you know, they, they have a lot of fat, the ribs. So a lot, a lot of people like it, you know, you, you can keep it on if you want. Uh, I kind of like to remove some of that fat. You see, look right there, friends. It's pretty simple to do. You take a ladle and push it in. See, look, push it in. Push it in. Don't push it too hard, otherwise you remove some of that delicious uh, uh, juices. Juice. See, this is mostly fat. See, they have a lot of fat. Plus, the bacon contributed to some fat too. So a lot of people leave it. You can certainly leave it. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> if you eat enough, but it'll kill you. No, no, it's not going to kill you. I'd rather have butter, to tell you the truth. Then, uh, the, see, this is just fat, it's all fat. You see how easy it is to remove, friends? Not that difficult, you just push slowly, though. If you do it hard, you see? If you do it hard, then, uh, see all that right there, it's all, all fat, 100% fat right there. Sometime, you know, when I was in a hurry, in a restaurant business, I would do it faster, and then I would uh, take whatever it is I had, my whole bowl of fat, right? And I would refrigerate it because I didn't have time to be very good. So I would take a lot of the, 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 the stock. Oh, see? I would take a lot of the sauce, I mean, a lot of the actual sauce with me. And, uh, and this is like gold, you know, so you don't want to waste it. So what I would do, I would refrigerate that. And then tomorrow morning in the fridge, you have a big, thick layer of fat. You remove it, and what's underneath is like gold. You see by there? It's all fat. All right? So now, what we're going to do, friends, I'm going to take a couple of them out to show you. I'm not, not going to do them all right there. But you have it right there, and you see, and, and, and the bone should, it should come right out of the bone. You see? Now, not everything, not everything in there, friends, is easily to eat. There's some cartilage in there. Then you want to see, look, look, look how beautiful that looks. Look at, look at this, friends. Look how beautiful that looks. You see? Look at this. You see? This is all goodies right there. So you break it up like that. You see? My mom would do that for us. And then we would, uh, she would just put it all back. And I'm going to show you exactly how she would do it. You see? This is all goodies right there. This is all. Now, some of that cartilage right there, not so good. So, you want to take your time. See, with, with a fork, I think it works out great. You see, then you can leave the bones right there. You see, look, look how beautiful that is, friends. You see, uh, let me do one more. Okay, look, look at this. Look how beautiful that is. You see, it's still beautiful, right? So you can put it. You, you can put it all if you want, but some of that stuff right there, friends, you can't eat it. Some of that cartilage right there, you can't eat it. So, but it's up to you. Some people say, I eat everything. I think it's Jack, he said, I eat it. I eat everything. All right, so look, guys, I just put a little bit here because I just cooked. See, this is what I mean right there. This, this stuff right there, you can't eat that. I mean, you can try, uh, but I promise you, this is not the pleasant to eat. So you want to take it out of there. And now, see, look, right there, I'm going to make just a little bit, okay? I, I just cook myself a... a, a uh, half a pound of the pasta, the, 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 the pasta right there. So I'm going to put it in there like this. You see? Take it a little more time, you know. I'm, I'm going fast here because I don't want to bore you with my details. You know what, friends? I'm going to take a couple of more minutes. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more because I'm really needing I got a lot of pasta in there. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes, more minutes. 
and we're going to do it really quick, okay? I'll be back in a second, friends. I'm going to do them all. All right, I did clean them all, all up because I really, uh, really needed it. I actually cooked a lot of pasta in here. I got a good uh, a three quarter of a pound of pasta. But cook, and you put as much of the sauce as you want, and then you mix it up. And this, my friend, is an amazing pasta dish. This is like a Sunday dinner night with beautiful meat and falls. And we're gonna put, we're gonna use it all because it's beautiful, you see? Put it all in there. Just don't eat the bones. <laughs> there you go. Mix it all up. You see? And then what I do, it's starting to look good, eh? Yeah. That reminds me of my mom doing it. Yeah. You see? It's pretty simple. This will be one of the best pasta dish you, you make, friend, friends. I promise you. With as much or less meat, it's really up to you. We're gonna push it. Woo! We're gonna push it right here. You can put a little bit of freshly chopped parsley on it. I, I, I like to add a little bit of fresh chopped parsley in it. Can you see? Make it look nice. And then, of course, you got a good, uh, Four serving. Jack just says one for me, <laughs> and uh, and you just take it in and put it right there on a big plate. Make sure you got a lot of meat in there, friends. A lot of pasta, a lot of meat, a lot of vegetables. Make sure you put it, and then you finish it up with a little bit of Reggiano Parmesan. All right. However you do it, friends. Just take your time. This is an amazing pasta dish, friends. You're gonna love it. I like to always put some of the vegetables in there. And then I take some Parmesan and grate it right there on top. And right there, my, my friends, we have ourselves a beautiful pasta right there. I promise you, this is going to become one of your favorite pasta. And I'm going to test it to make sure it's good. <laughs> to make sure it's good. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna mostly test the, oh, look at that, they got a piece of meat right there, boy. Let me just test a little piece here. I don't wanna to have too much in my mouth when I'm talking. Wow, mmm, mmm, friends. Mmm, it's delicious. I hope you make it. Remember, give yourself plenty of time to cook them. And remember, you can also serve them with a, a mashed potato. It's delicious. I hope you make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching. Well, there's enough right there for you, for, for you and everybody. Look at this. This is gorgeous. This reminds me of Sunday dinner. Yeah. My mom would make that. Everybody would like, oh, yeah, we got the, the beef pasta. You see, look, look how beautiful it is. Perfect. It tastes delicious. <laughs>